This is a cool company here in uh, Israel, Aerobotics. Who are you? I'm Ron. I'm the CEO of the company yeah. and co-founder. Yeah. And you're building industrial scale drones. Autonomous industrial scale drones. That's, and the, that's the kicker. <clears throat> This, uh, so these are fairly big uh, drones. These yeah. are not uh, DJI, you know, little hobby drones. Yeah. What are they? What are you uh, thinking? Companies are going to use these for? Well, we come from a background of drones. So uh, we had the first service company in Israel, and we flew a lot of drones for a long time for clients. And at some point, we understood that uh, you know, consumer market is big, and there's a lot of companies rushing into there. But we wanted to be able to take drones to the next level in terms of their potential. So using the drone as a tool, as something that actually does work, that has ROI, that people can use not just because they're cool and they fly and you know it's nice to have it, but actually it's something that can produce value. That was our idea. That's why we had to take the technology to the next level in terms of having something that can actually perform, both in terms of how much time it works every day, and in terms of what it can do, in terms of technology. We wanted video that can go for miles, so we can fly longer and see video live from where we want to have it. We wanted to be able to use it as a multi-tool, something that can do several missions and applications, and grow that over time. Something that you have permanent in your hand, you don't need a pilot, you can fly it whenever you want, or do it schedule, but use it as a real tool. And these are meant to draw, uh, fly without humans. Yes. Right. Yeah. So you're going to fly it over a factory or an yeah. oil refinery or yeah. Some, yeah. some high value yeah. situation, right? Yeah. Well, like like everything, I think in technology, uh, if you have an error, it's usually a person that causes it. That's the situation. A computer usually does it better than you. Uh, so that's the idea. Uh, it started from you know cost reduction. And added value, but as we went on, we saw that you know it performs much better when it doesn't have a person interfering, right? So you use the drone and you set up the mission. You just press a button. You don't need to worry about the flight at all. And they can actually have a system somewhere and fly it from the other, fly it from the other way, uh, all over the world. But it's not even flying it. You just like you tell it what you want it to do, it'll do it. That's it. How does this compare to a hobby drone? You know, from a Chinese company, what, what's the difference that you would well, notice? Well, it's pretty much, uh, it's pretty much, uh, I think, the difference between a Boeing 747 to a Cessna. Uh, it boils down to the reliability of the components and the communication platform and everything uh, down to the complexity of the actual components and how reliable they are. Everything is faced to do actual work. So, you know, the amount of energy that goes into engineering a, a plane or even a small Cessna or, you know, an aircraft that's for hobby, it's just done uh, on a completely different level than a professional uh, kind of uh, thing that flies 400 people in the air. This box that is going on is over here. Yeah. Uh, what is this and, and how does this so, so fit this into? Is, this is the docking station. Uh, this is basically the home of the drone. Uh, this is where the drone uh, docks. Uh, it protects it from weather, it replaces the payload, so we can fly one mission with a payload to do security and then use another uh, payload to uh, map or to do inspection. So you can switch uh, sensors? You when you say switch. payloads, you're, you're talking about... Yeah, I'm talking like about whatever the drone sensors carries. Sensors yeah. or... So, you know, drones started because of, you know, it's fun to fly it, but at the end, what the drone carries is what brings you value, right? So if you want the drone to perform a mission and you're not a hobbyist who just wants to fly for fun or take a selfie, you actually want the drone to do something. That's our idea. And we wanted the drone to be able to perform a lot of missions, not just mapping, not just inspection, not just uh, sampling, not just gas and everything. And so the idea was, okay, we don't want to have a bunch of drones. We just want to have one drone and change whatever the payload, whatever it's carrying, to be different every time, depending on the mission. So you, you showed me a video where uh, this drone was being used to check out gas lines and yeah. see if there was leaks yeah. or, uh, and then use a different sensor platform to look at 
piles of sulfur and measure yes. inventory exactly. in, in a, a big uh, a sulfur exactly. refinery. Exactly. What, what kinds of payloads can you do today and yeah. which ones are you uh, looking to talk to new corporate clients about? So, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so again, the idea is the multi-tool, right? When you, when you buy a multi-tool, you have a knife, you have a screwdriver, you have pliers, you have whatever you need, you can just pull it out and use it. That's the idea here. So right now we have mapping, we have inspection, which means in terms of payloads, we have IR, we have HD, we have SD, RGB, and we have, we're working now on gas sensing and LiDAR and several others, but that's going to grow substantially. So whoever, uh, whoever's a... Uh, developing sensors for drones, talk to us because we if you have a sensor that you think you know is a great application to sensor gas or it has a great application to map or scan, we're interested. We wanna be able to introduce you to our ecosystem and have the both payloads come with our drone and then you know we can use this as a platform. We are not interested in developing the payloads ourselves. So that's a great ecosystem. Also in terms of software, if someone's developing an app that you know do motion detection on our IR video, we want to talk to you as well because we can integrate that software into our app store and then have that used by our clients. Now you don't need this drone to have really advanced eyes and uh, object avoidance and stuff like that, do you? Or, or do no, we're, we're flying in a, in a permanent location, which is Yeah, easier. you're flying like over a factory, over a mine, or over a yeah, oil refinery. We know something. where everything is. Uh, we, we're considering now uh, using uh, certain uh, technologies for sense and avoid, which are pretty common today, either sensors for, even if it's LiDAR or uh, using uh, uh, cameras just to do image, yeah, my video image is, processing. I interviewed them, they use four cameras yeah. to avoid trees if yeah. you're flying through the trees, right? Yeah, but you know, we're flying and we know where we're going. And uh, we are looking into uh, sense and avoid through uh, video image processing, so that's relevant to someone doing that. What's unique about Israel here? Why, why is this company coming out uh, of Israel? Why not China? Why not well, uh, you know, uh, Silicon I don't Valley? know it's, if it's fortunate or unfortunate, but the situation in Israel is that we have a lot of aerospace and defense industries in the country, probably the top in the world, like Elbit Systems and Rafael and Israel Aerospace Industries. And that gives us the advantage that a lot of people have great know-how in terms of reliable aerospace hardware, which is really what this thing is about. We wanted to create an aircraft that's reliable as a missile, and that's what we're doing. Uh, it takes a lot of development, we've been doing it for years, and Israel is a great place for that. Uh, you have a lot of people who have the experience. Uh, some place, you know, other places in the world, uh, maybe it's just hardware, just software, and Israel have a great mix of the two. So that was a big advantage for us. Yeah. Tell me about the company you're building. How many people are working here? And how did you get funded? How did you get the funding to build something this uh, complex? Because this is not yeah, something you do with two kids at a yeah. picnic table yeah, like Instagram. You know. You know? <laughs> this is uh, this is you know, autonomous drones are the holy grail of the industry. I think uh, once you have that ability, there's literally limitless possibilities for you to go after. And uh, we started the company. Uh, about a year and a half ago, we got our first uh, round from uh, Blue Run Ventures. Uh, it's a great VC in the Valley, great people. Uh, they put their trust in us, although we were from Israel and you know we didn't really know them before, but they gave us their trust and we're very happy to have them. And uh, our B round was done uh, by Charles uh, River Ventures, another great VC that has really backed us up and you know that allowed us to do this thing relatively quickly. We had the necessary funds to move fast and get what we need done. And, you know, it's, this thing is, there's a multidisciplinary engineering facet here. It's the only, the only industries in engineering that we're lacking is nuclear and chemi chemical. Every other engineering scope we have in here, it's mechanical, ele electronical, aerodynamical, communications, machinery, everything needs to be incorporated and integrated together to do this thing. Uh, so a lot of funds are needed build a machine like this, which is no less complicated than a car. So it takes a while. Tell me about the competitive landscape, because I know that, uh, there's other companies that have shown me yeah. systems that they say are autonomous or are heading that way. Well, uh, <coughs> it's, a, it's very difficult to do. Uh, I know that a lot of people want to do it. Uh, you can see videos in and out. And there you go. <laughs> you can, uh, you can, uh, see a lot of uh, videos of people who want to try
try and do this thing. I can tell you after two years of hard work on it, it's not easy. Especially if you wanted to be able to fly in, you know, high winds and different temperatures and different fast, different with different payloads, it's a very, very, very big challenge. And I am ready to uh, challenge any company out there that says that they have an autonomous platform to go head to head with us. You're invited to be the judge. I don't think that there's anybody out there right now that can challenge us on, on reliability and you know how many uh, cycles we can complete one by one. So. If anybody I, thinks so, I'm just welcome. So I have a friend who owns an oil refinery in Canada. Uh, what would he expect to pay for this? To, you know, well, this what, I can, to, what I can say in this point is that it's cheaper than having uh, an operator fly for you daily. And you get much, much more. Uh, for uh, precise prices, people can contact me. I'll be able to do that. Yeah. But I so can you're tell talking you, thousands per day? Uh, no, no, not, not even. Okay, because a, a human operator is... Yeah, it's, it's much cheaper. That was, that's, that, that was the basic idea, yeah. to have it cheaper. And it's more precise, and it does multiple things, and you, know, you can have it on demand. So one example would be uh, emergency response, right? Yeah. Uh, which, which would say that you know, uh, you, something goes on in, in, uh, in your factory, and a fire, and you want to be able to, uh, to monitor that fire quickly. You want to see what's going on. You want to call the fire department, let them see what's going on. If you have a pilot, I just the landing is the landing is. <laughs> I don't want you to show it. That's the that's our secret sauce right there. Uh, that's cool. Yeah. So uh, this is the problem of uh, interviewing somebody in the drum company. It makes a little noise when they're uh, yeah, yeah, testing we'll, out the equipment. Yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll get over it. But let's take that let's take that example as a the emergency response uh, aspect. So something happens, there's a leak, there's a fire, uh, there's an intruder. If you have someone on site, even if you have a 24-7 operator, it's gonna take him time to take the drone, go outside, put the battery, wait for GPS, and fly out. This thing would be ready in a minute or two. And just goes there and gives you what you need in an instant. And that's something that's huge. It's not even about cost reduction, it's about saving lives, it's about being able to see what's going on quick enough to respond and you know prevent damage and it's, it's, it's really valuable. The video cameras you have on the drone or, or that are potentially on the drone because the uh, payloads can yeah. change. Yeah. There's like 4K standard video Well, cameras we're using or, uh, different kinds right now. We're using... Because uh, obviously if my oil refinery blew up, yeah. I'd want to put the drone up and take video yeah. of it to understand where the damage is, exactly. what, where to send the exactly. fire trucks, where to you know, try exactly. to build an emergency response exactly. to it. Right? So we come in and we work with the client to uh, set programs into the, into the drone that you, know, you don't need to think too much. If there's a fire in zone A, press zone A or fire route and it just goes there and it's what you want. So Can you have multiple drones in the air at the same time? Yes. So you could have one shooting video, one shooting uh, maybe uh, mapping, one mapping, yeah. and then one doing a, a, a sensor of chemicals, so yeah. that you could map how bad the pollution yeah. is and yeah. whether you need to yeah. warn people. This gives a completely new uh, dimension to a factory, right? They're in 2D now. You get a drone, you get 3D. There's so much data you can get from being in the air constantly, every day, uh, on a routine basis, which could drive you into. You know, just making better decisions, not just responding to an emergency, but just for your core process in the business to be able to perform better. Uh, my, my friend who owns an oil refinery, how long would it take to work with your team to, to get this set up on site and three get weeks. the three weeks so yeah. you would come and map the site yeah. and then work with yeah. their team to That's, figure out the kinds of workflows that they would yeah. need to, to build a, exactly. a pattern for? Yeah. That's exact. That's something that uh, you know. I told you this. We had the biggest service company in Israel for drones, so we we know what we're doing with drones. We used to fly them for thousands and thousands. You're the of first our, commercial pilot in Israel. Yeah, right? I was, and I started the first commercial uh, uh, service company with drones in Israel, which became the biggest one in the country and one of the biggest in the world. So we have a lot of experience flying drones. So when we set up a system like this, we know what it can and cannot do, and what the drone should be doing. So it really helps us uh, when we come out to a site and you know demonstrate what we need to demonstrate and, and you know pre-configure all the routes to get the most value we need out of the flights. Very cool.
Well, we're going to go and uh, see how it works. Yep. Thank you so much for uh, Thank you. showing me your very interesting company and, and giving me another taste of Israel. I'm Thank getting a, a, a tour all week long of different startups in the ecosystem and it's always uh, mind-blowing what I find here. Yeah, so thank you so much. It's an interesting co country. Yeah. Thank you. And where do we learn more about it? You right. go to aerobotics.co.il. Uh, Very cool. Yeah. Thank you so much.